was the threat, yes, sir. Will you answer my question? When you aimed and pulled the trigger at Mr. Jean, shooting him in center mass exactly where you are trained, you intended to kill Mr. Jean. I did. Oh my goodness. No intro. Hi, my name is Christina and welcome to my channel. I am shook. I've been watching Amber Geiger testify and listen, before I even get into this and everything that I have seen, witnessed, heard her say, cross-examination, all of that, whether you agree with me or not on my opinions, I'm going to give you guys the facts, okay? But we don't have to agree on everything, okay? We don't, but please watch this all the way till the end. And I'm going to leave the link to this. Hopefully, it's still up by the time I get this up. Down in the description box, you guys are free to go and watch it yourself and come up with your own opinions. But I feel very strongly, very strongly about my opinions in this case. You know, we can agree to disagree, but this is what it is, okay? I got comments on my video this morning, people saying that I don't know the whole truth and da 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 da. Listen, the only thing I am speaking on is what I have seen. And most of what I have seen and taken and took my opinions from are actual court stuff. What I have seen people testify there. Some of you guys are telling me that Amber Geiger knew both of John before this. They dated. None of that was stated in court. Okay, if that happened, it wasn't stated in court. So, therefore, my opinion is not based on that. But whether she knew him or before or not, my opinion on the outcome is still the same. Okay. Now, I told you guys in my first video that I did not think that this was a murder situation. I am here to tell you now, the way the prosecution is dealing with this, it looks like it's going towards straight up murder, not even manslaughter. This is crazy. Oh my gosh. I just cannot imagine her family being in there listening to this. Let's get into it. When Amber got up there and her attorneys spoke to her first, it was basically a lot of cryings, I'm sorry, that type of thing. He really, her lawyer in the beginning really tried to play out on like, I remember in the beginning of it, and you guys, if you watch it, you'll see, they start asking her about her childhood, who, if her parents were, they, her parents divorced at five years old, she's the youngest of three siblings. In my mind, I'm watching it going like, okay, sometimes... The past and the way you grew up does have something to do with the case. But in this case, I didn't see how that would correlate. You know, maybe if you have somebody that's selling substances in the streets, homeless, then you bring up those type of things. But this case, like this, <laughs> I didn't see anything to do with why her parents got divorced, why that affected this. And I'm going to tell you right now, she better be glad that that is a jury trial and not a judge trial. Because I can tell you from the way that judge acts. That judge is not on her side, okay? I mean, she's very fair. She's not doing anything wrong, but she ain't taking no bull up in there. Moving on. So that was basically it. Baby, when the prosecution got up there to cross-examine her, it was on and popping, honey. Okay, first of all, they talk about her carrying her bag in there and that the, the door was ajar. Of course, she went into the door. And in my mind, I'm thinking... She's saying that when she went up to the door, she heard scuffling in there. So she knew someone was in her apartment. So she felt like there was a threat. In my mind, if I go to my house and it sounds like somebody's in there, I'm going to back away from my house and call the cops, right? She should have backed away then and called for backup. But she put her gun, pulled her gun out and went in to get the threat. Okay, so then she now she's got intent, right? She's got intent instead of backing away because she said she heard it before she even went inside. Moving on. If you guys hear the 911 call, it is bone chilling. And not bone chilling because you hear people screaming or whatever. You hear her say over and over and over again, I thought he was in my apartment. I thought I was in my apartment. I thought I was in my apartment. And then she says, I'm going to lose my job. I thought he was in my apartment. I'm listening to the 911 phone call going, why aren't you doing CPR on him? Hush, go do CPR, help him, save him. Like in my mind, like it sounds like all she's worried about is herself. What comes out later in prosecution, cross-examination is, Three minutes and 25 seconds into the phone call. Okay, she is on the phone 
with 911 while both both of them is laying on the floor passing away and she is texting her lover. So she's on the phone with 911, she's texting her lover. And then she deletes those text messages while she could be doing CPR on him. Now, some of you guys were mad at me about my first video, but come on now. Where was her mind at? Where was her intentions at? I just could not imagine. Another point that prosecution brought up was the fact that over and over and over again, she kept saying, I thought I was in my apartment. I thought I was in my apartment. Over and over and over and over and over again. You know what she never said was? I thought he was going to kill me. I thought he had a gun. Oh, he may have a gun. Oh, she never, ever, ever said she thought he was a threat. She only kept saying, I thought I was in my apartment. Woo! Another thing that was brought up, in her bag, she has stuff for bandaging, stuff like that. She had stuff in her bag to try to close up a wound or whatever. She never reached for it. All she did was pacing back and forth. They also, prosecution always, our, <clears throat> prosecution also brought up that when the cops were coming down the hallway, she was out in the hallway waiting for them. He was like, why weren't you helping him? Why weren't you doing CPR? She said, I was too nervous. And he goes, well, you weren't too nervous to use your hands to do CPR, but you, he said, well, you were too nervous to use your hands to do CPR, but you weren't too nervous to be texting your boyfriend, who some of you guys brought to my attention, said he was a married man in court. They did say he was a married man. And that's why she said she was deleting her text messages because she was embarrassed and did not want to be caught messing with a married man, which, you know, neither here nor there, but y'all were right. Another thing that I want to bring up is they have videotape of inside the police car. Okay, so they're, they have videotape. They are upstairs getting both of them, putting them on a stretcher, all of that. Another officer comes and gets her, brings her inside of the police car. She says, should I turn this camera off? And the officer says, no, just don't say anything. So she was already in her mind trying to still cover her track. Should I turn this camera off? And then guess what? Literally when the camera, it shows both of them going by on the stretcher. She looks at him and starts texting. So prosecution is like, you did not care about him. You obviously did not care. What were you doing when this man's body is being taken by you? Texting. All right, guys, we're going to keep going. Another thing that they brought up was the fact that two days, just two days after his passing, she was already texting and talking about getting drunk. She was already back sleeping with her married lover. And so they're basically saying, you weren't, they go, he said, you're in here in court now testifying. Because remember when I told you whenever her, her defense lawyer got up there with her at first, she was crying, saying how sorry she was. She was actually saying over and over again, she didn't, she couldn't live with herself. You know, she wanted, you know, she wanted to die every day. And he goes, well, two days after he died, you were out, you know, talking about drinking and, you know, sleeping with your ex-lover. You obviously wasn't too distraught then. He was like, why, why, basically saying, why isn't that the same energy? Boy, I'm telling you, prosecution is tearing her alive, tearing her a new one, you guys. I was shook. You guys got to watch it. Now, this is this is where it starts getting a little bit crazy. He has her stand up and hold her arm like she's like she's going to shoot, right? According to whoever it is, the investigators or whatever, both of them was not standing up when he got shot. He was bent over doing something. In my mind, I would imagine him, you know, holding onto the couch saying, hey, you know, what? I have no idea. I can't really say. But he was not standing up when he shot her, but she said he was coming at her. Another thing that they talked about was she was trained to shoot multiple different ways. And the way that she actually shot him was deadly force. And she admits in there that she intended to kill him. And she said she was intended to kill him because she thought he was a threat. But that that is no longer valid because if she thought he was a threat, she shouldn't have even went into the house because cops, according to, you know, this, I don't know, I'm not an officer, are trained to take other measures, right? To, you know, whatever. So she shot to kill. And that is why I think that this actually may turn into murder instead of manslaughter. 
There were so many. We're not even talking about the red flags anymore. All of those red flags that she missed that I talked about in my video this morning, <clears throat> throw them in the trash. When you watch this and you see all of the things that she did wrong, you guys, now I know, listen, I try to be a very diplomatic and fair person about everything. I try to see all sides. So many of y'all have tore me up talking about I'm not seeing her side. I see her side, but I, in, in my opinion, like I see the family side. The family are the ones in there, you know, two days afterwards when he was passed away and she was talking about getting drunk and she was going and, and doing the deed with her boyfriend. Both of them's family is mourning the loss of their son and their brother and their cousin and their friend. He was an amazing man. So many of y'all commented on my first video and said that y'all knew him. He was incredible. And not to say that if he wasn't as incredible as Bo is, that his life would be any less valid. That's not what I mean. But I, I really harp on that because I feel like a lot of the times in the media, when somebody is, you know, shot or killed, that the media likes to focus on all the negatives. So I'm really trying to drive home the point here, the reality of who this man was, because it needs to be known. This was an incredible human being that was doing nothing wrong. Was it an accident? Do I think that anymore? I think her going to the wrong apartment was a terrible accident, but the killing was not an accident. And you guys got to watch watch it. It was not an accident. And she says it. She says that she shot to kill. She shot to kill because she said it was an intruder. Which she still did all the wrong. Y'all, she's toast. She is toast, toast, toast. So I just had to jump on here. Throw this video out here. Let me know what you guys think down below. I know some of you guys are mad at me, probably unsubscribing now, but listen, you guys, I, I feel what I feel about this. I feel very strongly about this. My heart, ugh, for the family, you guys. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much, and I'll see you in the next video.